Welcome back, everybody, to Partnerships for Smarter Security, made possible by Dell Technologies. And on previous episodes, we focused a lot on recovery. In this episode, we're going to talk about reducing the attack surface with a much deeper focus on supply chain security, a really important topic today within enterprises. And all this coincides, of course, with Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Now in this series, we're exploring how industry participants across the stack are collaborating to improve security outcomes for enterprises and organizations globally. And with me today are two experts in their respective fields. J.R. Balaji, who's the Director of Product Management for Software in the Client Solutions Group at Dell Technologies, and Patrick Bohart, who's the Director of Trust and Security Products in the Software and Technology Group at Intel. Gents, welcome to the program. Thanks for being here. Happy to be here. All right, let's start by setting a baseline. I mean, years ago we shifted from what we think of, you know, from where we sit today as a relatively benign attack, something like that. I mean, some kid in his basement infecting our devices for fun and bragging rights, but organized criminals and nation states have realized that cyber attacks, they scale when you can infiltrate an organization's crown jewels and extract ransoms and exfiltrate trade secret, secrets and cause other damage. Earlier this decade, we heard about supply chain attacks. Let's start with why are these attacks so effective? And, and JR, why are the attackers targeting the, the supply chain? Thanks, uh, first of all, it's great to be talking to both of you here. Um, attackers have a wide variety of techniques that they can leverage. Uh, I always refer to everybody to the MITRE attack technique. Uh, there are constantly techniques being added to that. Uh, now most organizations uh, focus tend to focus on popular techniques, you know, phishing, ransomware, credential theft. They are very popular and therefore top of mind for most IT and security organizations. But the reality is that adversaries can use any combination of techniques to breach organizations. Therefore, they look for softer targets. And and supply chain, for example, is a relatively less evolved. Uh, less understood security threat vector, therefore they go after supply chain and other um, less understood, less protected targets. Yeah, so Patrick, chains have links. And so people are attacking the, the weakest link. What's your perspective on this? We have 20 years of partnering with companies like Dell, CrowdStrike, Microsoft, to, with a focus on OS and application uh, security. And, hardening those surfaces, you know, for, for the last 20 years. We've done such a good job there that the attackers have had to go elsewhere. You see this in increase in uh, firmware and BIOS level attacks, and they're absolutely moving to the supply chain as the next frontier of areas where they can insert malicious code and, and get their exploits out into the wild. Well, so that said, it's like every year, <laughs> There's new, new attack vectors in, in novel ways. The adversary is exceedingly capable. Patrick, let's stay with you. How do you assess how well prepared organizations are to defend against these types of, of novel attacks? How exposed are we? Well, you know, like Dell and Intel have been partnered for years on this one, but if you look at the industry data, Supply chain attacks are on the rise and they're you know going up hundreds of percentage points a year. So that suggests that you know the level of industry awareness and the level of industry solution that we need, we haven't hit that yet. That said, uh, we're going to talk about what Dell and Intel are doing here. And uh, you know we're really leaders in this space to protect Dell devices running on Intel ePro processors. And, and JR, I mean, it's like the way we think about attacks are, are changing. You know, we used to be focused on dwell time, and now it's, you know, how much time does it take for somebody to start uh, uh, tra uh, traversing laterally? Uh, so what's your take on how well-prepared organizations are? It uh, goes back to what I said a little earlier, right? So organizations have focused a lot of their preparation over years on top attack, attack vectors. Uh, in recent times, ransomware has been top of mind for every organization, every size of organization. Uh, so they're just now coming up to until honestly until solar winds happen, people did not realize just how large of a threat vector supply chain itself is. So I would say they are definitely underprepared. In fact, we did a study uh, within Dell. We interviewed a whole bunch of global IT decision makers, and we found that only 40% of the organizations actually demand from their IT suppliers 
details around how they've implemented supply chain security, and that's a gap. Um, and and beyond that, it's also complex because you have to think about multiple types of controls within supply chain. Uh, we talked about we talk about we will talk a little bit more in detail later, but we did talk about. You know, we talk about a little bit of that paradigm of physical and digital security, right? And they have to account for all of that in into the picture. Uh, they have to think about sourcing, assembly, manufacturing, and how the devices procured. So the complexity, you know, increases quite a bit with supply chain. Uh, we also know that uh, from other studies that about sixty nine percent of the organizations have had at least one device level or device based attack used against them, uh, and and those are all you know pointing to the fact that uh, the level of prepared, preparedness is not where it should be. And it's a very complicated situation for, for organizations. And Jair, let's stay with you. And, and we have a graphic here that, that I want to pull up and maybe you could talk to that, but I want to understand what you're doing about it. How does the Dell and Intel's, how does your collaboration create an environment that's that's safer, we care about you know, more trusted client and PC security supply chains uh, for enterprises around the world. How are you approaching that? Sure. Uh, by now it should be amply clear that uh, security is a team sport. Um, it takes uh, the coming together of security community to jointly address this, what I call pandemic of its own right uh, that most organizations are facing as they digitalize and modernize, the cyber risk thus just exponentially increases. Uh, that said, the way we think about it is, um, you know, both the Dell and Intel have a long history of serving customers in the IT space. We understand IT, we understand security. We understand the points of intersection between these two organizations and how they need to come uh, to it together at the seams to solve these problems. Um, therefore, our approach to all of this is uh, we really want to operate at, okay, so look at the entire attack surface. You know, you can prevent all you can, you can try to prevent as much as you can in, in cyber, uh, but we have to come together and say, hey, all the possible attack surfaces that could exist and how do we continuously shrink that attack surface through joint innovation? And obviously we specialize in our own things. There are things that Intel can do at the silicon level and what they control within the chipset. Dell can do a lot of things around procurement, vendor selection, assembly, manufacturing, shipping. And so by bringing the expertise of what each of us do well together, uh, we collectively rise the uh, profile of security of a device. And we are in, the, in a position to reduce more attack surface than what we would do if we just acted individually. That's why this partnership matters a lot. Thank you, JR, for, especially for those, those stats. You know, Patrick, the, the thing we always talk about in security, and it's become sort of a throwaway line, is security must be designed in. And, and everybody says that, it, our, we all nod our heads, but then you think about, okay, what does that mean and, and how hard is it to do that? I write a lot and I'm always writing about the stack, the infrastructure stack, the data stack, the application stack, the networking stack, the cloud stack, and there's seams everywhere. So let's, let's start with, again, designing it in. You know, from your perspective, you know, how do you think about um, this, this collaboration and creating a, a more trusted client and PC supply chain? Yeah. So I want to go back to something that JR said. He mentioned physical and digital, and and I wrote a paper on this two years ago. You know, Dell Safe Supply, uh, you know, industry leading physical supply chain security program, personnel, facilities, whitelist vendors. Um, you know, tamper evident, uh, you know, tape on the boxes and 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 tamper evident, you know, uh, you know, moving services when they move the product from point A to point B. Physical supply chain security is what typically gets talked about, but where I think Dell and Intel have really collaborated uh, and, and been innovative is around this idea of digital supply chain security. And um, whether we're gathering information and you know digital information as the products are being manufactured, so we're understanding the state uh, of the product as it's being manufactured, understanding the details of the machines and the technology and the tools that were being used, capturing that information in a digital, you know, kind of a digital DNA of the device. And then when we get into, uh, you know, the hardware aspect of this, 
Um, you know, Dell and Intel have partnered around very unique uh, use of Intel vPro technology, uh, technologies like our vPro manageability engine to ensure that the device is trusted at point A and then verifying through this, you know, this digital supply chain that it, you know, arrives in the same digital state. Uh, and then, and then going down into resilience, uh, Dell safe, safe BIOS leveraging Intel vPro hardware shield, uh, capabilities like boot guard and BIOS guard, which can ensure that again, those, those, those regions those you know, sensitive regions of the CPU, those sensitive regions of the platform haven't been tampered with and haven't been attacked as the device moved through the supply chain. And that's really that digital supply chain security is I think, you know, really where Dell and Intel have created some unique value. Right, I mean, this is a really hard problem and it takes companies with, with the resources like you have to lead. So JR, let's come back to you. I, I, I always like to talk about first principles and I, we have another graphic here. But I'm interested in how Dell and Intel approach the PC supply chain. Uh, what's the starting point and, and your general philosophy, if you could talk about that, to lowering supply chain security risk? Yeah, I, I always tell everybody that uh, security of a device begins even before it's assembled. So we shift left, extreme left, uh, from the point of view of even designing, uh, identifying, procuring components from vendors. How do we ensure, especially we saw this during pandemic, there was a scramble for parts. And as those things happen, some of those supply chain controls tend to get compromised. And Dell, because of the prowess we have in supply chain, uh, was able to bring to bear and make sure that we are maintaining uh, our supply chain rigor to that most standards, uh, what we call secure design life cycles. So we stuck to those principles. Uh, so, so if I think, think about that, you know, the first thing is that we have to secure our device supply chain. That means we have to put the strictest of the controls on our supply chain, hardware, software, uh, our uh, fulfillment centers have to have a certain quality of uh, uh, security. We even define, and this is referenced uh, in detail in the white paper, what kind of perimeter security we expect our supply, uh, you know, our, our fulfillment centers to have. Uh, what kind of uh, tracking we do on shipments, especially as go through as they go through riskier routes, uh, sea shipment particularly, we think about uh, how do we implement privilege access within factories? Who can do what? Right? We we do, you know, we do signing of firmware and BIOS, and those are done it in specific locations. Uh, the people who can sign the infrastructure set up to sign all that is under is is, is designed to meet the highest of the standards. Uh, then we get into uh, what we call the design and develop secure devices. Obviously our products would have to have that in build, which is where a lot of our secure design life cycle comes into process, uh, into, into, into picture. Uh, we perform rigorous testing. And one of the things we do is what we call threat modeling and adversity behavior, uh, operating with an adversary behavior mindset, right? What are the kind of things that adversaries are likely to exploit? We, we do that simulations. Uh, and then we do rigorous, you know, uh, testing and threat modeling. And based on the risk that is identified, we obviously you not know, build in the protections or countermeasures as needed. We even have an expanded uh, bug bounty program, pen testing, everything we have amplified over the last several years so that we can find things that are broken way before an adversary can find it. Um, then we work on making sure that we are also able to get these devices into the hands of our customers in the most secure way. There we do a couple of things, even being prescriptive about what kind of locks that our trucks can use. There are four different specified kind of locks that they can use, nothing else. Uh, similarly for secure component verification, and this is coming up to be, right now it's a requirement in the federal uh, space, it'll likely be a regulation coming up pretty soon, where most federal organizations are required to uh, demand for their IT suppliers a platform certificate that can attest to the validity and integrity of the components put on the device. Uh, we have had that for the last couple of years uh, because we knew this is important for our customers and we got ahead of it and built it. Again, speak to the mindset of, it's not about an attack vector that emerges and becomes a big deal. Then we figure out how to solve it. Our mindset and approach and design philosophy is find an attack surface before it blows up and, and shrink it so that no, it, it's that much harder for adversaries to, to breach uh, our customers. And thank you, JR. Now, Patrick, coming back to you and this notion of first principles, I'm looking at this slide. 
security, integrity, quality, resilience. There's so many pieces of this. You got the development life cycle, you got supplier accountability, uh, you, you've got counterfeit pretend, uh, prevention and detection. How That's very complicated. And then of course, you know, kind of Intel's wheelhouse, silicon root of trust, platform firmware resiliency, but you guys, you write a lot of software, you have a, a really uh, robust supply chain. Uh, so Patrick, what's your point of view on this? Well, yeah, I want to build on a couple of things that JR said. Uh, he mentioned platform certificates and platform certificates are becoming uh, an industry standard way of having that digital supply chain security where we're tracking the device as it goes uh, through its manufacturing process. So that specification was authored by the Trusted Computing Group and Intel and uh, Dell are both board members of TCG and were very active in documenting and creating that specification. And that's become a very important piece for how uh, or, you know, government organizations and even financial services organizations are ensuring that they understand what they're getting and they're, sure it, and they're ensuring that as we've gone through all those pieces, we have that digital DNA, that digital trail so that we can understand where it came from, who participated. Is it still in the trusted state that I expected in? Um, and we're going to talk a little bit later about where we see the industry going. And again, this is, you know, Dell and Intel are at the forefront of authoring that next generation of standards for how you move the trust barrier from the system level all the way down to do I, can I verify the trust of each individual components digitally? So that's a, that's been a big collaboration point for us. Yeah, thank you. And then, as I was saying before, you know, the stack keeps getting more complicated. Let's talk about the topic du jour. Uh, JR, everyone's of course focused on AI and how it's going to revolutionize security. I mean, at the same time, you know, AI brings in risk. I know procurement departments are like, wait a minute, you, you've got AI. Well, how do we, you know, make sure that that complies and that's safe? So how how is Dell using AI in its supply chain? And then uh, Patrick, I'll, I'll come back to you. JR, take it away. I would say that. You know, we, we all know the, the potential of AI and also the risk of AI. That, that basically means that organizations will have to, just as we would expect an adversary to, to lay their hands on AI technology and use it to do bad things, organizations have to use AI to defend AI that can do bad. Uh, from our side, we do a lot of things, right? So historically, we have had, we have been leveraging things like machine learning and AI in our supply chain for many years. Uh, again, it's quite widely documented in our white paper, so I definitely encourage our viewers to go uh, know, read about it. Uh, but it's like, it starts with, you know, intelligent planning and forecasting models, uh, because there's a, a whole aspect of supply chain resiliency and the risking that we'll have to account for all the time. It, it's not necessarily just security, but it's also overall supply risk that we have to account for. Uh, we have forecasting drivers for inventory optimization engine, uh, that helps us improve our forecast accuracy. Uh, we are also scaling our digital twin capabilities that allows us to uh, help conduct a lot of uh, what if scenarios uh, and business outcomes and assess risk so that we are better prepared uh, to deal with any kind of supply chain disruption, whether it is security related or something else, now we should be in a position to, to, to be resilient against those. We're also developing uh, machine learning models that can optimize inventory, uh, you know, minimize shortages, all, all of that. So all of the good stuff. Uh, and then and then last but not the least, we also have um, a lot of management and insights and logistics that 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 uses AI. Uh, again, a lot of that is part and parcel of how Dell has operated uh, over many, many years. Okay, and, and then Patrick, I'm interested in Intel's point of view on this topic. You know, you hear the, all the buzz around neural processing units, um, nope. where, what, what do you think about this AI topic? Well, obviously it's going to define, it's going to be critical for the next you know, stage of security moving forward. Um, we're in the process right now of defining how we can use L LMM for uh, platform component identification. That's going to be a powerful tool. You mentioned uh, counterfeit identification. That's a big risk. It's a, it's a, it's a massive security risk. It's, it's one that we, we don't, have the controls we need today and, and AI is going to play a big role in helping to identify counterfeit components going into our systems. But then we also talked about resilience and um, an area where Intel and Dell have partnered where we're using that XPU, NPU, GPU strategy is in the work that we're doing collaboratively with CrowdStrike on threat detection. 
because it's not only about protecting the device as it goes through the manufacturing in environment. You have to then maintain and protect the device as it goes into its operational phase. And the work we've done around Intel threat detection, where we can detect abnormal behavior on the CPU. And today, anything that's abnormal is malicious. If there's something happening on the device that, that exceeds or, or goes beyond what we understand the normal baseline is, that's a malicious activity. And the sooner we can get that information uh, through technology like threat detection technology, Intel threat detection technology to, you know, to CrowdStrike and then to the end customer, you know, the better. And, and this is a, a vibrant partnership that Intel CrowdStrike and Dell have had around Intel vPro uh, and Intel threat detection technology. And I think this industry collaboration is so important. It's, it's something that we talk about all the time on the, on the Cube. Organizations like yours with resources and talent um, and capabilities and experience have to work together because the adversaries are so capable. Patrick, staying with you, can we talk a little bit about you know, futures? How do you see, you've got to keep evolving because again, the attackers <laughs> are evolving, they're a moving target. How do you see these capabilities evolving in the future? Well, we talked about AI, and that's obviously going to be a big, you know, AI is going to play a big role moving forward. Um, the other area where we're going to evolve supply chain security is, in the, is how Dell and Intel are going to partner in the Trusted Computing Group to generate the next set of standards for how you trust the device and how you trust the components going into those devices. And we're partnered together to create standards like DICE, which is a, you know, a hardware-based identity that we're going to build, have the industry build into their components. So we're no longer trusting a device based on its product number and serial number. There's actually going to be a cryptographic way to attest to the identity of individual devices going into Dell systems and then Dell as the owner of the system, as the manufacturer of the system can create that route of trust where they can use these next generation standards to actually query the devices and say, is this the same hard drive? And do I trust this hard drive? Uh, is it the same one that I put on the system when it was manufactured? And do I trust it? Is it, a, is it an authentic manufactured hard drive? And can it still identify itself as being the supply chain component uh, that I trusted when I put it on there? And that's going to be a huge step forward because we're no longer looking at the system level. We're taking that barrier of trust and bringing it all the way down to the individual component levels. Yeah, DICE is, uh, if I understand it, a hardware and software sort of cryptographic mechanism. Uh, I forget what it stands for, device something, <laughs> uh, but you know, it's a security. Identity so. component engine, but yeah. Ah, it's, thank it's, you, it's, thank you for that. What is it, it's device identity uh, component, component. Engine. Okay. Thank yeah. you for that. And Please. it is, uh, yeah. And I mean, in, in this way, we can, you know, ensure, you know, Dell and Intel can ensure that the components going into the system at manufacture are from trusted sources, not counterfeit, not mislabeled, not gray market, uh, but are the, you know, the white list components that we expect. And then have over the life cycle of that device the ability to ensure that those devices remain the same and untampered. And, and if there is another solar winds attack, and if an adversary comes in and begins altering hard drives or altering the, the communications uh, infrastructure of the device, that device will no longer be able to appropriately identify itself. And that will cue IT, this device has been tampered, this device is at risk. Yeah, thank you, JR, maybe, maybe a two for one here. I mean, your ability to see around corners uh, and sort of forecast the future is important. So I'd be interested in your thoughts on sort of that last topic, but also how, what makes Dell and Intel's approach you know, stand out? How is it different, JR? So I want to quickly chime in on where Patrick left off before I answer that yeah, question. Uh, he talked about regulation, that's so important. Uh, again, all of this is, goes back to the well understood zero trust principles. Uh, today, most software security companies will will look at zero trust and how they build their products. Uh, there is a tremendous opportunity for companies like Dell and Intel to collaborate, and industry in general to collaborate, and ensure that the zero trust standards are understood and and accepted, and and built into the device level. Right, that's new new territory we are charting. Right, so that's very important for us to continue to further uh, our mission on that. Now, back to your question about. Uh, what, how do we stand out? Uh, I said this a little bit earlier. It's two things. One is focused on outcomes-based approach. 
you know, security industry is replete with uh, many different tools and widgets, no dearth of them. Uh, but cyber breaches continue to happen. And they happen because um, too many tools, too many silos, and organizations, especially IT and security, struggle to keep up with all of these. And there is definitely an opportunity for us to try to, because we understand IT and security better, we can start uh, operating with, that, like I said, the adversary mindset and start to continuously shrink attacks at base. So it's a two-pronged approach at the end of it. One is uh, continuously build a countermeasures and reduce attack surfaces so that the the exposure area is shrunk further and further. And when things happen, bad things happen, uh, detect and respond much faster. And how do we do that? It's about making sure that that rich telemetry that we collect out of all the discussion just we had today, all of that is very rich telemetry that a security operations center could use to have an ability to have an early detection of a threat. Now, this is where partnerships also matter beyond what Intel and Dell does, the integration and partnerships we have with vendors like CrowdStrike or Microsoft. These will allow us to allow us to surface these telemetry in the tools that IT and security are used to so that they have better context, richer telemetry, and hopefully ability to take faster action. I mean, those three you know, brands, obviously it's not just a you know, press release that you guys are doing. You're actually doing some some of the hard work, but but Patrick, I wonder if there's anything you would add to to that differentiation point. No, I mean it, we again, you know, Dell is a leader in taking advantage of hardware-based security. Dell is a leader in leveraging the the capabilities in the Intel vPro platform um, to provide uh, you know unique value and again, like you said, reduce those attack surfaces and offer improved abilities around resilience. And and that's what stands out is is you know really taking advantage of that hardware based security. It's it's you know, like I said, um, the industry has been attacking software for decades and the degree to which we can, you know, root those solutions and be pro security, the better off Intel and Dell are going to be, the better off ultimately the end customers are going to be. All right, last question. Uh, guys, any parting advice that you would uh, compart uh, to our audience? What questions should organizations be asking vendors like you and others? Maybe so that they can help understand the risk and reduce it. JR, why don't we start and then Patrick, you bring us home. Yeah, I think, I think organizations have to place greater emphasis on foundational hardware level security in general. Um, as we start at the very beginning of this uh, uh, discussion, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a relatively less focused, less understood area, however, a big point of exposure for organizations. So therefore, uh, my suggestion to organization is to uh, ask vendors about their product development practices. How are they, what kind of governance do they have? Do they have the ability to provide platform certificates for products? Uh, what kind of sourcing, manufacturing, and supply chain, uh, supply chain uh, risks mitigation that they have in place. And, and also, also last but not the least, uh, how do they ensure they're continuously mitigating attack surface, reducing attack surface, and uh, using things like threat modeling. Uh, those are the things that I think customers should ask any IT supplier at this point. Great, and, and Patrick, we'll give you the last word. Uh, in, in, in my discussions with enterprise IT, I'm often shocked at the level of awareness of the innovation that's happening, the innovations that are actually available today, um, hardware that you know, companies have deployed in thousands of systems that they're not taking advantage of just purely because they didn't know. And, you know, both Dell and Intel have robust sales forces with, you know, deep knowledge uh, to perform the role of trusted advisor to these IT organizations. So talk to them, ask them in, you know, across the supply chain and into the life cycle of the device, you know, where are those opportunities and what are those solutions that are available today you know, four Dell-based systems that are built on Intel vPro processors. Where where are those solutions like threat detection technology that, you know, again, has uh, proved incredibly valuable for identifying threats. And I think, or, or for even going back into the supply chain, you know, the 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 value in the, you know, in the, the, you know, what we can offer in terms of security around platform certificates 
even, you know, that's one of the older sets of technology we talked about today and still awareness is low. So, you know, talk to your Dell advisor, talk to your Intel advisor. There are solutions out there across the spectrum from supply chain to operational security uh, that can be deployed and are available in, you know, you know, products like Microsoft and CrowdStrike and solutions from Dell. Um, what are those and, and how can I deploy them in my environment? It's so important and great advice because you know, in the heat of the battle, people are so focused and a lot of times they're just not aware of some of the capability. Yep. These are freebies, you have them, take advantage of them. Uh, our, we also have some, some resources for you. Principal Technologies uh, is a world-class, they're independent third-party benchmarking and validation firm. Uh, and we're showing here they've, they've conducted testing and research on this topic. They produce a comprehensive report on device security. We'll put that link into the notes for you. There's also a Dell white paper on supply chain security that we'll put in the notes as well. Guys, thanks so much. Great conversation and thank you for the, for the hard work that you're doing to keep us safe. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. All right, and thank you everybody for watching this segment of Partnerships for Smarter Security made possible by Dell Technologies and its, and its ecosystem partners like Intel. Stay tuned to our program for more information on how industry partnerships are contributing to better security outcomes and how you can lower your risks.